the infant Brunali's pitiful wails were silenced by the ear-splitting boom of plasma artillery as shrapnel tore into his mother's back, killing her instantly. Talis had almost reached the evacuation shuttle with her son Linux when the Krovax kill teams attacked the spaceport. Searing beams of plasma fire rained down, vaporizing civilians and melting ferrocrete as battle drones swarmed through the smoke. Talis ran, clutching the screaming Linux to her chest. A human aid freighter sat on a nearby landing pad, engines roaring. The ramp lowered and a tall man in a flight suit emerged, waving frantically at Talis. It was her only chance. She sprinted up the ramp, shoving through the crush of refugees. The man grabbed her arm, yelling over the din. I'm Captain Jake Davis. We'll get you out of here. Talis opened her mouth to thank him when an artillery shell struck mere meters away. The blast hurled them to the deck. Talis felt a searing pain in her back. Warm blood soaked her shirt. Coughing, Jake crawled to Talis. Jesus, just hang on! Talis grabbed his arm with failing strength. Please, take Linux. She thrust the wailing infant into his arms. Save my son. Her eyes closed and her hand slipped away, leaving a bloody handprint on Jake's sleeve. He stared at her still form in stunned silence, then down at the baby. Linux's cries grew louder as explosions rocked the ship. Captain, Krovak's force is closing in. We need to go now. The first mate's panicked voice crackled over the intercom. Jake snapped out of his daze and charged up the ramp, barking orders. Get us the hell out of here. Maximum burn. The freighter lifted off, thrusters blazing. Krovax fighters strafed the hull with laser fire. Jake stumbled onto the bridge, still clutching Linux. He strapped into the pilot chair and wrenched the control yoke, throwing the ship into a stomach-churning climb. Harry, get the FTL spun up. We need to punch through the blockade, Jake roared. Harry gaped at the alien infant. What the... is that a baby? Later, just get us out of here or we're all dead. Plasma rounds hammered the shields, as Krovak's dreadnoughts loomed ahead, disgorging swarms of fighters. Jake gritted his teeth and plunged the freighter directly toward the flagship, its cavernous hangar bay yawning open. Ari's eyes widened. You're not seriously going to... Damn right I am. Divert all power to forward shields. The freighter hurtled into the flagship's hangar, skating over ranks of attack craft. Jake zigzagged through a hail of point defense fire, and tore out the other side, a hair's breadth from the shimmering containment field. Warning alarms blared as the abused hull groaned in protest. Lennox wailed in terror, and Jake absently patted his head. Ari, status. FTL charge, coordinates locked. Punch it! The freighter leapt to light speed, the livid faces of the Krovax commanders dissolving into streaks of light. Jake sagged back in his chair, and looked at the fussing alien baby in his lap. Ari shot him an incredulous look. Jake keyed the ship-wide com. Well, folks, I think we just became the most wanted human smugglers in the galaxy. And I... He glanced down at Linux. I guess I just became a God's damned dad. Five years had passed since that fateful day when Jake Davis became an unlikely father to the Brunali infant, Linux. The Horizon once just a simple smuggling vessel, had transformed into a sanctuary for war orphans and refugees from across the galaxy. Jake's crew, a ragtag bunch of misfits, had embraced their new roles as caregivers and protectors. Ready or not, here I come to, Jake called out, his voice echoing through the cargo hold. He and Linux were in the middle of an intense game of hide-and-seek, a rare moment of levity amidst the constant danger they faced. As Jake searched behind crates and barrels, he heard a faint clanking noise coming from the far corner of the hold. Curiosity peaked. He crept towards the source of the sound. There, hunched over a decommissioned power loader, was five-year-old Linux, his small hands deftly manipulating the machine's intricate components. Jake watched in awe as Linux expertly disassembled and reassembled the broken loader, his movements precise and confident. In mere minutes, the once defunct machine whirred to life, its hydraulic limbs moving smoothly. Lennox, that's incredible, Jake exclaimed, causing the boy to jump in surprise. Where did you learn to do that? 
Linux shrugged, a shy smile on his face. I just watched you and Ari fix things. It's not that hard. From that moment on, Jake took Linux under his wing, teaching him the intricacies of starship mechanics and engineering. As the years passed, Linux's skills grew exponentially, and he became an integral part of the Horizon's crew, his quick thinking and technical prowess saving them from countless scrapes. But as Linux approached his tenth birthday, Jake found himself grappling with a difficult decision. The war with the Krovax had left deep scars on the galaxy, and many humans still harbored resentment and prejudice towards the Brunali. Jake feared for Linux's safety should he venture out into the wider world. I don't know, Harry, Jake sighed, running a hand through his graying hair. Part of me wants to keep him safe here on the horizon, but another part knows he can't stay cooped up forever. Tari, ever the voice of reason, placed a comforting hand on Jake's shoulder. You can't protect him from everything, Jake. Sooner or later he's going to have to face the realities of this universe. Unbeknownst to them, Linux lurked just outside the doorway, his heart racing as he eavesdropped on their conversation. A fierce perseverance welled up inside him, a burning desire to prove himself to his adopted father and the crew who had become his family. He clenched his fists, his mind already racing with ideas. He would show them all what he was capable of, that he was more than just a helpless refugee. He was Linux Davis, the son of the infamous Space Dad, and he would carve his own path in this unforgiving galaxy. The distress call came in the middle of the night cycle, jolting Jake from a restless sleep. He stumbled to the bridge, rubbing grit from his eyes to find Ari already at the comm station. Her face was grim as she played back the message. This is Colony Theta-6. We're under attack by Krovax raiders. They've breached our defenses. Please, if anyone can hear this, we need immediate evacuation. They're slaughtering us. Jake's blood ran cold. He had hoped to never hear those screams again, not after fleeing the Brunali homeworld all those years ago. He was about to order Ari to set a course when Linux burst onto the bridge, his eyes wide. So we have to help them, Dad, Linux pleaded, his voice cracking with emotion. We can't just leave them to die. Jake hesitated, torn between his instinct to protect his son and the desperate cries still echoing from the speakers. Linux, it's too dangerous. The Krovax... I'm not a little kid anymore, Linux interrupted, his fists clenched. You've taught me everything about this ship. I can help. Jake stared into his son's determined eyes, seeing a reflection of himself at that age. With a heavy sigh, he nodded. All right, but you stay on the ship, you hear me? Monitor the systems and keep the engines hot. We might need to bug out fast. Linux broke into a grin, throwing his arms around Jake. Thanks, Dad. I won't let you down. As the horizon dropped out of FTL on the edge of the colony system, the extent of the devastation became clear. Krovax warships swarmed like angry hornets, strafing the planet's surface with plasma fire. Plumes of smoke rose from the ruined defenses, and the comm channels were choked with static and screams. Jake assembled a heavily armed ground team in the cargo bay, checking the charge on his pulse rifle. He pulled Linux aside, gripping his narrow shoulders, Remember, keep the ship running and the shields up. If anything tries to board, you seal yourself in the engine room, got it? Linux nodded solemnly, looking far older than his ten years. I will, just be careful down there, okay? Jake ruffled his son's hair, forcing a smile. Hey, it's me, I'm always careful. With a final hug, Jake joined his team on the dropship, watching Linux's small figure recede as the bay doors closed. The ship shuddered as it entered the atmosphere, anti-aircraft fire peppering the shields. They set down in the heart of the colony, the landing ramp lowering to reveal a scene of utter chaos. Colonists ran in panic through the rubble-strewn streets, many clutching wounded loved ones. Krovax shock troopers marched in perfect formation, cutting down fleeing civilians with ruthless efficiency. The air was thick with the stench of burning plastic and flesh. Go, go, go! Jake roared, his team fanning out to establish a perimeter. They laid down suppressing fire, the whine of pulse rifles and the bone-shaking thump of plasma grenades filling the air. 
Jake ducked into a half-collapsed habitation block, kicking down doors and shouting for survivors. A group of wide-eyed children huddled in a corner, whimpering in terror. He scooped up the youngest, herding the rest towards the extraction point. Ari, where's that dropship? Jake yelled into his comm, plasma bolts sizzling past his head. On its way, but Jake, we've got a problem. Ari's voice was strained. A Krovax boarding shuttle slipped past our defences. They're on the horizon. Jake's heart seized in his chest. Linux, Linux, come in. There was no response, only the hiss of static. Aboard the horizon, Linux watched in horror as the Krovax shuttle clamped onto the hull like a parasitic wasp. He heard the clang of mag boots on metal as the boarders entered the airlock, the screech of plasma cutters slicing through the inner doors. For a moment, panic threatened to overwhelm him. He was just a kid, alone on a ship full of deadly Krovax soldiers. What could he possibly do? Then he remembered Jake's words, the countless hours spent exploring every inch of the Horizon's systems. He knew this ship like the back of his hand, and that gave him an advantage. Linux sprinted to the engine room, his mind racing. He sealed the blast doors behind him and pulled up the ship's schematics on a wall screen. The boarders were moving towards the bridge, their life signs clustered in the main cargo bay. A crazy idea formed in Linux's mind. It was risky, but it might just work. His fingers flew over the console, rerouting power from the shields to the atmospheric containment fields. He isolated the cargo bay, sealing the bulkheads and venting the air from the compartment. Warning alarms blared as the pressure dropped. On the screen, Linux watched the Krovax life signs flicker and fade, their bodies pulled towards the outer airlock by the rushing air. With a final, triumphant keystroke, Linux opened the airlock, sending the boarders tumbling into the void. In the colony below, Jake fought his way back to the dropship, his arms burning with the weight of the wounded child he carried. The last civilians boarded, Ari laying down covering fire. As the ramp closed, Jake's comm crackled to life. Dad, Dad, are you there? Linux's voice, shaky but alive. Relief washed over Jake like a cool wave. I'm here, son. What's your status? I'm okay. We had some uninvited guests, but I spaced them. The ship's secure. Jake couldn't help but laugh, even as the dropship shuddered under a hail of Krovax fire. That's my boy. We're on our way back with the survivors. Have the med bay prepped. As the dropship docked, Jake raced through the corridors, his heart pounding. He found Linux in the engine room, soot-streaked but grinning. Jake pulled him into a fierce hug, tears stinging his eyes. I am so proud of you, son, what you did today. I couldn't have done it better myself. Linux beamed up at him, his earlier fear replaced by a newfound confidence. Thanks, Dad, I just did what you taught me. Jake smiled, ruffling Linux's hair. I guess I can't keep you locked up on this ship forever, huh? You're ready to face whatever the galaxy throws at us. Linux nodded, his eyes shining, as long as we face it together as a family. As the horizon plotted a course for the nearest friendly outpost, the survivors safely in the medbay, Jake looked around at his crew. Ari, her face streaked with grime, but her eyes alight with pride. The other orphans they'd taken in, tending to the wounded and comforting the frightened. And Linux standing tall at the navigation console, no longer a scared little boy, but a brave young man. They had all been forged in the crucible of war survivors and outcasts, but together they had found something worth fighting for, something that felt a lot like home. Years passed in a blur of close calls and daring escapes, as Linux grew from a precocious child to a skilled young man. At fourteen, he could rewire a power coupling blindfolded and boost a shield generator's output by twenty percent. The once timid Brunali boy had become an integral part of the Horizon's crew, his quick thinking and technical prowess saving their hides more times than Jake could count. But with Linux's growing abilities came greater risks. The Horizon took on increasingly dangerous missions, running blockades and ferrying vital intel to the scattered remnants of the human resistance. They were constantly one step ahead of the Krovax, dancing on the razor's edge between victory and annihilation. 
It all came to a head during a routine supply run to the front lines. The horizon had just entered the system when the proximity alarms blared, the sensor screen lighting up with the telltale signature of a Krovax frigate dropping out of FTL. Shit, Jake swore, wrenching the control yoke. Ari, reroute power to the rear shields. Linux, I need more speed. Linux's fingers flew over the engineering console, coaxing every last ounce of power from the straining engines. The deck plates shuddered as the first plasma rounds slammed into their shields. They're launching boarding pods, Ari shouted, her face pale in the flickering light. The ship lurched as the pods latched onto the hull, the scream of rending metal filling the air. Jake grabbed a pulse rifle and tossed another to Ari. Linux, stay here and keep us flying. We'll handle the borders. Linux nodded, his teeth clenched. He watched on the security feeds as Jake and Ari led the crew in a desperate defence, the corridors echoing with the whine of pulse fire and the sizzle of plasma rounds. But for every Krovax they cut down, two more seemed to take their place. A sudden explosion rocked the ship, throwing Lennox from his chair. Warning alarms blared as the engine readings flatlined, the power grid flickering and dying. They were dead in space, sitting ducks for the Krovax frigate. Linux staggered to his feet, his mind racing. Jake and the others were pinned down, fighting for their lives. He was the only one who could reach the engine room and assess the damage. But the corridors were swarming with Krovax, and he was just one scrawny teenager with a multi-tool. His eyes fell on the ventilation shaft, a crazy plan forming in his mind. It was a tight fit, but Linux had always been small for his age. He pried open the grate and wriggled inside, the metal walls pressing in on him from all sides. Guided by his intimate knowledge of the ship's layout, Linux crawled through the ducts, the distant sounds of battle muffled by the thrum of his own heartbeat. He dropped into the engine room, the acrid stench of burnt insulation filling his nostrils. The main reactor was a twisted ruin, plasma fire licking at the shattered containment field. But as Linux approached, his blood ran cold. There, attached to the reactor's cooling system, was a Krovax demolition charge, its countdown blinking an angry red. They didn't just want to disable the horizon. They wanted to vaporize it, to erase every trace of Jake Davis and his ragtag family from the universe. Linux swallowed hard, his hands shaking as he pried open the bomb's casing. He'd never seen a device like this before, but he recognized the basic components. A power source, a detonator, a mass of high-yield explosives, and a tangle of multicolored wires that held the key to their salvation or their doom. Closing his eyes, Linux thought back to every lesson Jake had ever taught him, every schematic he'd pored over late into the night cycle. He pictured the flow of energy, the intricate dance of circuits and relays. And then, with a deep breath, he began to work. His multi-tool flashed as he carefully snipped wires and bypassed fail-safes, his brow furrowed in concentration. The countdown ticked lower, the seconds stretching into eternity, Linux's world narrowed to the task at hand, everything else falling away. With a final delicate twist, the countdown froze, the bomb's innards dark and lifeless. Linux let out a shuddering breath, his heart hammering against his ribs. But there was no time to celebrate. He still had to get the engines back online. Wiping the sweat from his brow, Linux turned to the reactor, his mind already spinning with ideas. He worked feverishly, rerouting power, bypassing damaged systems, jury-rigging fixes with whatever scraps he could find. It was like trying to rebuild a skyscraper with a pocket knife, but Linux refused to give up. Just as the last Krovax border fell to Jake's pulse rifle, the Horizon's engines flared to life, the deck plates thrumming with renewed power. Linux sagged against the reactor housing, a grin spreading across his grease-stained face. Over the comm he heard Jake's whoops of joy, Ari's relieved laughter. They were alive, they were free, and it was all thanks to him. Jake found Linux in the engine room, the boy's hands still shaking from the adrenaline. He pulled him into a fierce hug, tears stinging his eyes. You did it, son, you saved us all. Linux grinned up at him, exhaustion and pride warring on his face. I just did what you taught me, Dad. 
kept my head, used my smarts. Jake ruffled Linux's hair, his chest swelling with love and pride. I always knew you were special, kid, but today you proved you're a goddamn hero. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a small wrapped package. I was saving this for your birthday, but I think you've earned it early. Linux tore open the paper, his eyes widening as he beheld the sleek custom-built multi-tool nestled inside. It was a work of art, every bit as elegant and powerful as the Horizon herself. You're not just the Horizon's chief engineer, Linux. You're the heart and soul of this ship, this family, and there's no one I'd rather have by my side as we take on the galaxy. Linux clutched the multi-tool to his chest, tears welling in his eyes. For so long he'd dreamed of proving himself, of earning his place among the stars. And now, standing shoulder to shoulder with the man he called father, he knew he'd finally found where he belonged. The horizon set course for the nearest friendly port, her crew battered but unbroken. They had won the day, against impossible odds, and with Linux at the helm, they knew they could face whatever challenges the future held. For they were more than just a crew, more than just survivors. They were a family forged in the crucible of war and tempered by the unbreakable bonds of love and loyalty. And the galaxy trembled before them. The war against the Krovaks had reached a critical juncture. Intelligence reports flooded in, each more alarming than the last, but one stood out above the rest. The Krovaks were developing a superweapon capable of annihilating entire planets. The Horizon crew gathered in the briefing room, the air thick with tension. Jake paced before a holographic display, his face grim. This is it, people. If the Krovaks finish this weapon, it's game over. We have to steal those schematics before it's too late. Linux leaned forward, his eyes alight with an idea. What if we use that captured Krovak scout ship to sneak past their defenses? They'd never suspect one of their own. Jake hesitated, the thought of putting his son in danger twisting his gut. But as he looked around at his crew, he realized Linux was no longer a child to be sheltered. He was a vital part of this team, with skills and knowledge they couldn't afford to waste. All right, Jake nodded. Linux, you're with me. We'll pose as Krovax technicians and infiltrate the facility. The rest of you be ready to extract us at a moment's notice. The scout ship glided through the void, its Krovax markings blending seamlessly with the stars. In the cockpit, Jake and Linux sat in tense silence, their disguises itching against their skin. As they approached the research station, a harsh voice crackled over the comm. Scout vessel, transmit authorization codes. Linux's fingers flew over the console, broadcasting the stolen codes. For a heart-stopping moment, there was only static. Then the voice returned. Codes accepted. Proceed to docking bay 7. They glided into the cavernous hangar, the scout ship dwarfed by the looming Krovax warships. As they disembarked, Jake fought the urge to reach for his concealed pulse pistol. One wrong move, and they'd be vaporized. Linux led the way, his eyes glued to a purloined schematic of the station. They wound through narrow corridors, past patrols of heavily armed Krovax soldiers. Jake's skin crawled beneath their inscrutable helmets, his every instinct screaming danger. At last, they reached the central database. Jake jacked into the system, his implants interfacing with the alien technology. Reams of data flashed before his eyes, the schematics tantalizingly close. Linux stood guard, his multi-tool clenched in a white-knuckled grip. His gaze darted from screen to screen, monitoring the station's systems for any hint of detection. The progress bar crept forward, agonizingly slow. Jake's heart hammered in his ears, every second stretched to eternity. Just as the download completed, an alarm shrieked through the station. Intruder alert, intruder alert, a mechanical voice blared. All units converge on the central database. Jake ripped the jack from his skull, his knees going weak. Linux was already moving, his fingers flying over the door controls, but it was too late. Krovax soldiers poured into the room. Plasma rifles leveled at their heads. For a moment the world seemed to freeze. The schematics were like a lead weight in Jake's pocket. 
the key to the galaxy's salvation, but they were trapped with no way out. Then Linux moved, his multi-tool flashing. Sparks erupted from the room's power conduits, consoles exploding in showers of flame. The Krovax reeled, their weapons faltering. Go, Linux yelled, shoving Jake towards the door. They sprinted down the corridor, alarms howling in their wake. Plasma bolts sizzled past their heads, the stench of ozone choking the air. They burst into the hangar, the scout ship a beacon of hope. But the Krovax were close behind, their fire growing more accurate with every step. Jake cried out as a bolt seared his shoulder, the pain blinding. Linux half-dragged, half-carried him into the ship, his face set with unshakable focus. He slammed the hatch closed and threw himself into the pilot's seat, his hands flying over the unfamiliar controls. The scout ship lurched drunkenly, plasma rounds pinging off its hull. Linux gritted his teeth and fired the thrusters, the acceleration slamming them back in their seats. The hangar doors loomed before them, a rapidly closing maw. With a burst of speed, they shot through the narrowing gap, the edges of the doors scraping the ship's belly. And then they were free, the research station receding behind them. But their escape had not gone unnoticed. A swarm of Krovax fighters spilled from the station's launch bays, their plasma cannons already spitting fire. Linux jinked and wove, the scout ship bucking like a wild stallion. So ahead, a dense asteroid field loomed, a treacherous maze of tumbling rock and ice. Without hesitation, Linux plunged into the deadly labyrinth, the fighters close behind. Jake clung to consciousness, blood seeping through his fingers. He watched in awe as Linux flew like a man possessed, threading the needle between jagged spires and whirling boulders. The Krovax ships burst like overripe fruit against the unforgiving stone, until only a handful remained. With a final desperate maneuver, Linux wrenched the ship around a massive asteroid, the Krovax slamming into its surface in a blossom of fire. And then they were through, the horizon's welcome bulk filling the viewscreen. As they limped into the hangar, the crew swarmed around them, their faces etched with worry. Ari took one look at Jake's ashen face and barked orders, the med bay prepped in seconds. Linux staggered from the cockpit, the schematics clutched in his trembling hand. He thrust them at Ari, his voice raw. Get these to the resistance. We got what we came for. As Jake was rushed to surgery, Linux collapsed into a chair, his adrenaline-fueled strength finally giving out. But even as exhaustion claimed him, a fierce pride burned in his chest. They had done the impossible, struck a blow against the Krovax that would be felt across the galaxy. And he, Linux, the orphaned Brunali boy, had been at the heart of it all. A hero forged in the crucible of war, tempered by the love of his found family. The galaxy would never be the same. As Jake lay in the medbay, his wounds slowly knitting under the regenerative field, Ari burst in, her face tight with urgency. Jake, we've got new orders from command. They need us to escort a group of Brunali refugees to Haven Colony, out on the fringe. Jake struggled to sit up, wincing as pain lanced through his shoulder. Brunali! I thought most of them were scattered after the Krovax attacked their homeworld. Ari nodded. They were, but these are some of the last survivors, and the brass wants them protected. Linux, who had been keeping vigil at Jake's bedside, perked up at the mention of his people. I can help, Dad. I know their language, their customs. Let me be their liaison. Jake hesitated, the thought of Linux interacting with other Brunali stirring up old fears. But he saw the perseverance in his son's eyes and relented. All right, but be careful. We don't know what they've been through. As the horizon docked with the refugee transport, Linux stood in the airlock, his heart pounding with anticipation. The doors hissed open, revealing a ragtag group of Brunali, their faces haggard and haunted. One girl, no older than Linux, stepped forward, her eyes widening as she took in his appearance. You, you're Brunali, she whispered in their native tongue. Linux nodded, a lump forming in his throat. I am. My name is Linux. Welcome aboard the Horizon. The girl introduced herself as Talis, and as Linux led the refugees to their quarters, they fell into easy conversation.
Talis spoke of her life before the war, of the lush forests and crystal-clear lakes of their homeworld. Linux listened, enraptured, a bittersweet ache filling his chest. Over the next few days, as the horizon journeyed towards Haven Colony, Linux and Talis grew close. They shared stories of their lost families, of the hardships they had endured. Linux taught her how to play star chess, while she showed him the intricate braids of Brunali hair weaving. But their newfound friendship was shattered when the proximity alarms blared, jolting the ship from its slumber. On the bridge, Jake stared at the viewscreen in disbelief as a battered human frigate dropped out of FTL, its hull scorched and pitted. Horizon, this is Commander Axton Vard of the Solaris. We know you have Brunali aboard. Surrender them immediately or we will open fire. Jake's eyes hardened. Vard, this is Captain Jake Davis. The Brunali are under our protection. Stand down. Vard's face twisted with disgust. You would defend those alien scum? They're a threat to every human in the galaxy. Hand them over or suffer the consequences. Linux, who had raced to the bridge with Talus at his heels, stepped forward, his eyes blazing. They're not a threat. They're refugees, just like I was. Please, Dad, we can't let him take them. Jake looked at his son, torn between his duty to protect the innocent and his fear for Linux's safety. But before he could respond, Linux turned to Vard, his voice steady. Commander Vard, I have a proposal. I'll surrender myself to you as a show of goodwill. In exchange, you let the horizon and the refugees go. The bridge erupted in chaos, Jake and Ari shouting their objections. But Linux held up his hand, his gaze never leaving Vard's. Do we have a deal? Vard considered for a long moment, then nodded. Very well, but if the horizon tries anything, I'll space you myself. As Linux prepared to leave, Jake pulled him into a crushing hug, tears stinging his eyes. You don't have to do this, son. We can find another way. Linux shook his head, his own eyes glistening. This is the only way, Dad. I have to protect them. Protect you. I'll find my way back, I promise. He turned to Talis, who stood frozen, her face a mask of anguish. Keep them safe, he whispered, and don't forget me. Then he was gone, marching down the airlock with his head held high. As the Solaris pulled away, Tylis pressed her hand to the viewport, a single tear tracing down her cheek. I won't forget, she murmured, and I will find you, Linux, no matter what it takes. The Nemesis's brig was a cold, unforgiving place. Linux sat on the hard metal bench, his wrists chafed raw by the restraints. The air reeked of sweat and fear, the only sounds the distant hum of the engines and the occasional screams of other prisoners. He'd lost track of how long he'd been here, subjected to endless rounds of interrogation and abuse. Vard's men had beaten him, starved him, deprived him of a sleep. But through it all, Linux remained defiant. He would rather die than betray the horizon or the resistance. The cell door clanged open, and Linux squinted against the sudden glare. Two guards entered, their faces hard and cruel. They hauled him to his feet and dragged him down the corridor into a stark white room where Vard waited. The commander stood with his hands clasped behind his back, his eyes glinting with malice. You're a tough one, aren't you? he said, circling Linux like a predator. Most would have broken by now. But you, you're different. Linux said nothing, his gaze fixed straight ahead. Vard chuckled, a cold, mirthless sound. You know, I almost admire you. A Brunali standing strong against the might of humanity. It's almost poetic. He leaned in close, his breath hot against Linux's ear. But here's the thing, boy, I always get what I want. And what I want is the Krovax superweapon, and you're going to help me get it. Linux's heart raced, but he kept his face impassive. I won't help you he said, his voice hoarse from disuse. I won't betray my family. Vard's hand shot out, gripping Linux's jaw with bruising force. You don't have a choice, he snarled. You either join me or you die. It's that simple. He released Linux and stepped back, his eyes gleaming with triumph. 
Think about it, boy. You could be a hero. You could help me save humanity from the Krovax threat. All you have to do is say yes. Linux's mind raced, weighing his options. He knew he couldn't trust Vard, knew the man would stop at nothing to achieve his goals, but maybe, just maybe, he could use this to his advantage. He lifted his head, meeting Vard's gaze. I'll do it, he said, his voice steady. I'll help you get the super weapon. Vard's smile was like a knife. I knew you'd see reason, he said, clapping Linux on the shoulder. Welcome to the team, boy, let's get to work. Over the next several weeks, Linux threw himself into his new role, working tirelessly to gain Vard's trust. He provided invaluable insights into Krovac's technology and strategy, impressing even the most skeptical of Vard's men. But all the while he was plotting. He used his access to the Nemesis's systems to gather information, to learn the ship's weaknesses and vulnerabilities, and whenever he could, he snuck into the communications array, sending coded messages to the horizon. It was a dangerous game, one that could get him killed at any moment. But Linux knew he had to try. He had to find a way to stop Vard, to safeguard the galaxy from his twisted ambitions. And so he worked, and he planned, and he hoped. Hoped that somewhere out there his family was coming for him. Hoped that he could hold on long enough to see them again. On the horizon, Jake paced the bridge, his face drawn and haggard. It had been weeks since Linux's capture, weeks of fruitless searching and dead ends. But he refused to give up, refused to believe that his son was lost forever. We have to keep looking, he said, his voice raw with emotion. We have to find him. Harry placed a hand on his shoulder, her eyes soft with sympathy. We will, she said. We'll bring him home, Jake, I promise. Just then, Talis burst onto the bridge, her face alight with excitement. I've got something, she exclaimed, thrusting a data pad into Jake's hands. A message from Linux. He's alive, and he's on Vard's base. Jake's heart leapt, hope surging through him like a wildfire. Can you decode it? he asked, his hands shaking. Talis nodded, her fingers flying over the pad. Already done, she said. He's given us the location and the layout of the base. We can do this, Jake. We can save him. Jake turned to his crew, his eyes blazing with grit. You heard the lady, he said. Let's go get our boy back. As the horizon raced towards Vard's base, Linux put his own plan into motion. He snuck into the Nemesis weapons control room, his multi-tool clutched in his sweaty palm. With a few deft keystrokes, he disabled the ship's defences, leaving it vulnerable to attack. Then he made his way to the bridge, his heart pounding in his chest. Vard was there, barking orders at his men. Linux stepped forward, his chin held high. "'It's over, Vard,' he said, his voice ringing with conviction. "'The horizon is coming and they're going to stop you.' Vard whirled around, his face contorted with rage. You, he snarled, reaching for his blaster. You traitorous little... But Linux was faster. He lunged forward, his multi-tool flashing. Sparks flew as he jammed it into the ship's main console, overloading the systems. Alarms blared, red lights flashing, as the reactor began to melt down. Vard screamed in fury, firing wildly, but Linux was already moving, dodging and weaving as he raced for the escape pods. He could hear the sounds of battle raging outside, the horizon and the resistance forces engaging Vard's men. He had almost reached the pods when a searing pain tore through his leg. He stumbled, crying out as he fell to the deck. Vard loomed over him, his blaster aimed at Linux's head. "'You think you've won?' he spat, his finger tightening on the trigger. "'You think you can stop me?' Linux closed his eyes, bracing himself for the end, but it never came. Instead, there was a deafening blast and Vard's body jerked and fell, a smoking hole in his chest. Jake stood in the doorway, his pulse rifle raised, his face a mask of fury. Get away from my son, he growled. Linux struggled to his feet, tears streaming down his face as Jake pulled him into a crushing embrace. I've got you, Jake murmured, holding him close. I've got you, son. Together they raced for the escape pods, the nemesis shuddering and groaning around them. 
They barely made it clear before the ship exploded, a brilliant fireball that lit up the void. As they drifted in space, waiting for the horizon to retrieve them, Linux sagged against his father, exhausted but triumphant. They had done it. They had stopped Vard, had saved the galaxy from his madness. And they had done it together as a family, forged in the crucible of war, tempered by love and sacrifice, unbreakable and unstoppable. As the horizon docked with the Resistance's flagship, the valiant Linux, stepped onto the hangar deck to a hero's welcome. Resistance fighters from a dozen species cheered and applauded, their voices echoing off the bulkheads. Tylis stood at the front of the crowd, her smile brighter than a supernova. Linux ducked his head, overwhelmed by the attention. Jake clapped him on the shoulder, his grin wide and proud. You did it, son. You saved us all. But before Linux could respond, a klaxon blared through the hangar. All hands report to briefing room one, priority alert. The celebration evaporated as the resistance fighters snapped into action. Linux and Jake exchanged a worried glance and raced after the crowd. In the briefing room, a grim-faced Admiral Nara stood before a holographic display of a planet, a pulsing red dot orbiting it. We've just received word from our spies in Krovac space. They've completed the superweapon, and they're preparing to test it on the human colony of New Terra. A chill settled over the room. Ari gripped the edge of the table, her fingers tightening. How long do we have? Less than a day, Nara said. We need to act now or millions will die. The Admiral tapped the display, zooming in on the red dot. This is the weapon codenamed Devastator. Our analysts believe it harnesses dark energy to create a localized singularity, collapsing the target into a black hole. Linux leaned forward, his mind racing. What about its defenses? Formidable, Nara admitted, but we have a plan. She highlighted a section of the weapon's schematics. There's a vulnerability in the control systems. If we can get a team inside, they could sabotage it, cause a feedback loop that would destroy the weapon. Jake frowned. That's a suicide mission. The Krovax would slaughter anyone who tried. Not anyone, Nara said, her gaze locking onto Linux. We need a team of Brunali engineers, ones who know Krovax technology inside and out. Linux's heart hammered in his chest. I'll do it. No, Jake's shout rang through the room. I won't let you. It's too dangerous. Linux met his father's eyes, his determination hardening. Dad, this is what you trained me for. This is why I'm here. I'm the only one who can do this. Jake opened his mouth to argue, but Ari laid a hand on his arm. He's right, Jake. We have to trust him. For a long moment, Jake held Linux's gaze, a war raging behind his eyes. Then slowly he nodded. Okay, but I'm coming with you. Linux shook his head. No, Dad. The Horizon needs you. The Resistance needs you. This is my fight. Tears glistened in Jake's eyes, but he swallowed hard and pulled Linux into a fierce hug. I am so damn proud of you, son. You come back to me, you hear? I will, Linux promised, his own eyes stinging. I will. The next hours passed in a blur of preparations. Linux pored over the Devastator's schematics with the Brunali engineering team, memorizing every circuit and subroutine. Talis worked beside him, her presence a steadying force in the chaos. In a quiet moment, she took his hand, her fingers lacing with his. We're going to do this, she said softly. We're going to end this war and build a better future. Together. Linux's heart swelled and he pulled her close, resting his forehead against hers. Together, he echoed. As the time for the mission approached, Jake found Linux in the hangar, staring up at the sleek Brunali stealth ship that would carry them to the Devastator. He put an arm around his son's shoulders, his face lined with worry and pride. Linux, there's something I need to say to you, he began, his voice rough with emotion. I know I haven't always been the best father. I've made mistakes, pushed you too hard sometimes. But I need you to know you are the best thing that's ever happened to me. Linux's throat tightened, tears blurring his vision. 
Dad. Let me finish, Jake said gently. You've grown into an amazing young man, Linux. Brave, smart, compassionate. I couldn't be more proud of you. And no matter what happens today, no matter where this war takes us, I will always love you. Always. Linux hugged his father fiercely, pouring all his love and gratitude into the embrace. I love you too, Dad. Thank you for everything. The hangar erupted into activity as the Brunali team boarded the stealth ship, their faces set with persistence. Linux took one last look at the Horizon crew, at his family. Ari, her eyes shining with unshed tears. Talis, her hand raised in farewell. And Jake, his smile proud and sad and full of love, and full. Then he turned and strode up the ramp, the weight of the galaxy on his young shoulders. The ship lifted off its engines a whisper and streaked towards the stars, towards the battle that would decide the fate of them all. The horizon shuddered as a barrage of plasma fire slammed into its shields, the deck plates bucking beneath Linux's feet. On the viewscreen, the Devastator loomed, a monstrous construct of jagged metal and pulsing energy. Swarms of Krovax fighters swirled around it like angry hornets, spitting death at the ragtag fleet of resistance ships. In the captured Krovax shuttle, Linux gripped the control yoke, his nucles tightening. Beside him, Tylis manned the weapons console, her face set in grim lines. The rest of the Brunali team huddled in the cramped hold, their tools and equipment clanking with each evasive maneuver. Thirty seconds to insertion point, Linux called over the comm. Horizon, what's your status? Jake's voice crackled through the static. Shields holding at sixty percent. We're drawing their fire, but we can't take much more of this. You need to move now. Linux nodded, his eyes sharp. He angled the shuttle towards the Devastator's underbelly, weaving through the chaos of the battle. Talis fired the shuttle's pulsed lasers, picking off the defense turrets one by one. With a final twist of the yoke, Linux brought the shuttle to a shuddering halt in the shadow of the Devastator's hull. He keyed in the docking sequence, his fingers flying over the unfamiliar controls. There was a clunk as the shuttle's airlock sealed against the Devastator's hull, and the light above the hatch turned green. We're in, Linux said, unstrapping from the pilot's chair. He grabbed his multi-tool and a pulse rifle, his heart hammering in his chest. Let's move. The team filed into the airlock, their faces pale in the harsh light. Linux took a deep breath, then hit the release. The hatch hissed open, revealing a dimly lit maintenance corridor. They moved quickly, their footsteps echoing on the metal grating. Following the schematics displayed on his multi-tool, Linux led them deeper into the Devastator's guts, past thrumming power conduits and hissing steam vents. The air grew hotter and thicker as they descended, the reek of ozone and scorched metal filling their nostrils. At last, they reached the control room, a cavernous chamber dominated by a massive holographic display of the Devastator's systems. Linux motioned for the team to take up defensive positions, then approached the main console, his multi-tool at the ready. But as he delved into the weapon's systems, his heart sank. The Krovax had installed layer upon layer of security protocols, each more fiendishly complex than the last. He probed and prodded, sweat beading his brow, but every attempt to initiate a shutdown sequence was met with blaring alarms and flashing error messages. Linux, what's happening? Talis asked, her voice tight with anxiety. Why isn't it working? Linux shook his head, frustration and despair welling up inside him. They've changed everything, the redundancies, the fail-saves. It's like trying to untangle a Gordian knot. I can't... I can't shut it down. Talus gripped his arm, her eyes searching his face. There has to be another way. We can't let this thing fire. Linux stared at the holographic display, his mind racing. And then, with a sickening lurch, he saw it. The power core, a seething mass of dark energy at the heart of the Devastator. If he could overload it, trigger a cascade failure. He swallowed hard, the implications hitting him like a punch to the gut. There is another way, he said softly. But, but I'm the only one who can do it, and I won't be coming back. Talis's eyes widened, horror dawning on her face. No, no, you can't, Linux, please. 
he cupped her face in his hands, his thumbs brushing away the tears that spilled down her cheeks. Talis, listen to me. You have to go. You have to live. Promise me. Promise me you'll have a good life, a full life, one without all this, this death and destruction. She shook her head, her shoulders shaking with sobs. Not without you. I can't, I can't lose you. Linux pressed his forehead to hers, his own eyes stinging. You'll never lose me. I'll always be with you in here. He placed a hand over her heart, feeling its frantic beat. Now go, get the team out. I'll, I'll take care of the rest. Tylis hesitated for a long moment, her gaze locked with his. Then, with a shuddering breath, she nodded. She pulled him into a fierce kiss, pouring all her love and anguish into it. I love you, she whispered. I'll always love you. Linux watched as she led the team back to the shuttle, their faces etched with grief and disbelief. Then, with a heavy heart, he turned back to the console. His fingers danced over the controls, rerouting power, overriding safeguards. The holographic display flashed red, warning klaxons blaring. Warning, power core overload imminent, cascade failure in T-5 minutes. Linux keyed his comm, his voice steady despite the fear that clawed at his insides. Horizon, this is Linux. Begin evacuation procedures. The weapon, the weapon will be destroyed. There was a crackle of static, then Jake's voice, thick with emotion. Linux, what are you doing? Get out of there. Linux closed his eyes, a single tear tracing down his cheek. I can't, Dad. Someone has to stay behind to make sure it blows. And, and it has to be me. No! Jake's anguished cry tore at Linux's heart. No, son, please don't do this. Dad, listen to me. Linux's voice was gentle but firm. You taught me what it means to be a hero, to put others before myself, and that's what I'm doing now. For you, for Talis, for everyone. He took a shuddering breath, the words spilling out in a rush. Thank you, Dad, for everything, for being the father I never had, for showing me what a family really is. I... I love you. There was a long silence broken only by the hiss of static. Then, in a voice raw with grief, Jake spoke. I love you too, son. I'm... I'm so proud of you. Linux smiled through his tears, a sense of peace settling over him. He had done it. He had saved them all. The deck shuddered beneath his feet as the power core began to destabilize, the air shimmering with heat. Linux braced himself against the console, his multi-tool clenched in his fist. And then the door to the control room burst open, and a towering figure strode through the smoke and flames. It was the Krovax commander, his armor scorched and dented, his eyes blazing with hatred. You, he snarled, leveling his plasma rifle at Linux's chest. You did this. You ruined everything. Linux raised his chin, his gaze steady. It's over, Commander. The Devastator is finished, and so are you. With a roar of fury, the Commander charged, his rifle forgotten. Linux met him head-on, his multi-tool flashing. They grappled and strained, the stench of burning circuitry filling the air. Linux ducked and weaved, his smaller size giving him an advantage. But the Commander was relentless, his blows raining down like hammer strikes. Linux felt his strength ebbing, his vision blurring. With a final desperate effort, he lunged forward, driving his multi-tool deep into the commander's chest. The Krovax stiffened, his eyes going wide with shock. Then, slowly, he toppled backwards, his armor clattering on the deck. Linux staggered back, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The control room was an inferno now, the power core a seething mass of unstable energy. He could feel the heat searing his skin, the radiation poisoning his blood. But he had done it. He had given them a chance, a future. And that was all that mattered. As the world dissolved into a blinding white light, Linux closed his eyes, a smile on his lips. He saw Jake's face, proud and loving, Talis, her eyes bright with laughter, and the horizon, his home among the stars. And then, with a roar that shook the heavens, the Devastator exploded, a billion shards of light and fire consuming all in their path, the shockwave from the Devastator's explosion rippled across the battlefield, the blinding flash 
searing into the memories of all who witnessed it. On the bridge of the horizon, Jake stared at the expanding fireball, his heart shattering as he realized the price of their victory. In the days that followed, the resistance forces rallied, their spirits buoyed by Linux's sacrifice. The intelligence gathered from the wreckage of the superweapon proved invaluable, exposing critical weaknesses in the Krovax defenses. Strike teams hit supply lines and command centers, while infiltrators sabotaged warships and weapons factories. The once mighty Krovax war machine began to crumble, their forces in disarray. Months of brutal fighting ensued, each battle a desperate struggle for survival. The Horizon and her crew were at the forefront, Jake leading the charge with a ferocity born of grief and rage. And then, on a distant planet whose name would be forever etched in history, the last Krovax stronghold fell. The empire that had terrorized the galaxy for generations was no more, its leaders either dead or in chains. As the news spread, spontaneous celebrations erupted on a hundred worlds. Species that had been bitter enemies put aside their differences, united in their joy and relief. The war was over, the galaxy was free. But for Jake and the Horizon crew, the victory was bittersweet. They had lost so much, so many friends and loved ones, and Linux, the bright star that had guided them through the darkest of times, was gone. A month after the final battle, a memorial service was held on the Horizon's homeworld. Representatives from every species gathered to honor the fallen, to remember the sacrifices that had bought their freedom. Jake stood on the podium, his eyes glistening as he spoke of Linux. He told of the scared little boy he had rescued from the ruins of the Brunali homeworld, of the brilliant young man who had become a son to him in all but blood. Linux embodied the best of us, Jake said, his voice thick with emotion. He showed us that courage and compassion know no boundaries, that the ties of family are stronger than any weapon. He gave his life so that all of us might live, and we will never forget him. As the service ended and the crowds dispersed, Jake found himself wandering the horizon's corridors, lost in memory. He stopped outside Linux's quarters, his hand hovering over the door panel. Jake, a soft voice behind him. He turned to see Talis, her face etched with grief and exhaustion. The war had taken a toll on her, as it had on all of them. Talis, Jake's voice was hoarse. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't see you there. She shook her head. It's okay, I was hoping to find you. Jake frowned. Is everything all right? Talis took a deep breath, her hands trembling. There's something I need to tell you. Something Linux and I never had the chance to... She trailed off, tears welling in her eyes. Jake stepped forward, concern etched on his face. Talis, what is it? I'm pregnant, she whispered, with Linux's child. Jake stared at her, his knees going weak. A grandchild, a piece of Linux living on. He felt a rush of emotions, joy, sadness, fear, love. Talis gripped his hand, her eyes pleading. I know this is a lot to take in, but I want you to be a part of this child's life. Linux would have wanted that. He loved you so much, Jake. You were the father he never had. Jake swallowed hard, tears streaming down his face. He pulled Talis into a tight embrace, feeling the small swell of her belly against his own. Of course, he murmured. Of course I'll be there, for you, for the baby, for Linux. They held each other for a long moment, two souls united in grief and hope. When they finally parted, Jake saw a glimmer of peace in Talis's eyes, a glimpse of the future they would build together. Months passed, and life slowly returned to a semblance of normalcy. The horizon took on a new role, ferrying supplies and aid to war-torn worlds. Jake threw himself into the work, finding solace in the simple act of helping others. And then on a clear morning in the depths of space, a new cry pierced the air. Jake held his newborn granddaughter in his arms, marveling at her tiny fingers and toes. She had Linux's eyes, bright and curious, full of wonder. Hello, little one, Jake whispered, his voice thick with emotion. I'm your grandpa, and I promise I'll always be here for you, just like your daddy was for me. He looked out at the stars, 
remembering the boy he had raised, the man he had lost. Linux's multi-tool hung from his belt, battered and scarred, a tangible reminder of the sacrifices that had brought them to this moment. Jake knew the pain of losing Linux would never truly fade, but as he held his granddaughter close, he felt a flicker of hope, a sense of purpose. Linux's legacy would live on, through the lives he had touched, the family he had built. And somewhere out there among the stars, Jake knew Linux was watching over them, his spirit forever woven into the fabric of the galaxy he had helped to save. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.